Welcome back to Shem's Universe. So today is a continuation of chapter 10, The Mystery of Sex. So in the middle of the chapter, he discusses what's known as the 10 mind stimuli, which is means like the 10 things that actually stimulate your brain the most. So to prove his point, he listed them off. And the first one is the desire for sex expression. So people that want to procreate, people that just are going through the hormonal imbalance, especially when going through puberty, that's the biggest desire that they have. Um, in the book, he also says that people, or men in particular, seldom reach success until after 40 because that's when they can actually control their sexual desires and that appetite and then focus it on something else. It's biologically proven as well that that would make sense because your testosterone depletes after 35 to 45 and then it has another really big depletion after 50 of course so when you understand that you would understand that once a man's sexual appetite goes down that would in turn lead them to have more energy to pursue other things such as like a career maintaining their family etc um the next one is love so for love of family love of a spouse um, that, of course, would make sense, even love for like an animal, like a pet. Um, that would make somebody, um, their mind highly stimulated in a really positive way. So that's going to make them want to make a difference for the people that they love, hence achieving a greater purpose. The third one is what's discussed in chapter one, which is a burning desire for fame, power, or financial gain. So people have different reasons for success. Uh, some people want to have success based on the fact that they just want other people to recognize them and be famous. So they say like terms like they're going to shit on others. I can't blame them. Um, there's also the power. So a lot of political people, I'd say stockbrokers, they don't necessarily want to be famous for what they do, but they want to be in control of their uh, demographic. So if you get into politics, a lot it's not a secret that a lot of psychopaths and narcissists get involved in the political arena for the reasons of getting power for their own personal agenda. So when you understand that, that's another, it is positive. Um, but it could lead to negative situations depending on the reasons that you want success. Financial gain, I think, is like the most common one that he brings up. Just because everybody knows that you could be happier being rich than being poor. They say money doesn't buy happiness, but a lot of people would argue that. Just give me the money and I'll find happiness. Don't worry. So that's that. Um, the fourth point that he brings up is music. So with music, I think this one will just be very individualized for everybody. A lot of people listen to music to meditate or get over something um, just to help them think. So I think music is something that um, is definitely across the spectrum a really good thing. I haven't really heard of music causing people to just say, I'm going to kill other people. People will argue it, but I don't really see that as being a fact. I think it's just a positive mental stimulation for people that you should definitely focus on, especially when you're feeling down. Um, and the fifth point would be friendship. So friendship with like, if it's guys when you're boys, if it's girls, of course, when you're girlfriends or a guy friend that you care deeply about, uh, that can cause very positive mental stimulation. And if you stay in that sort of state of mind, of course, you're going to get good results. The next one is very similar to friendship. It's the sixth point, which is the mastermind alliance. So a lot of the times, excuse me, um, you won't necessarily have your good friends in your mastermind group. A lot of the times you end up having people that more so are just interested in the same thing that you are and then you guys end up forging a friendship um, after you guys like achieve different purposes so it's really good in that sense where you will definitely make friends through your mastermind alliance and more often than not you end up cutting off your old friends once you find a group of people that share your interests um, seventh one is mutual suffering so unfortunately i have to go a little bit below the belt here um, the people that i would say would use mutual suffering as mental stimulation would be people like terrorists, for instance, people in Iran, Iraq, they end up performing things like ISIS that end up, they go for a bigger goal, but it's really a negative outcome overall. Um, I could also use mutual suffering as in like gay rights. Um, there's different things that you can utilize it for. So it just depends if you're suffering, but you want to make a positive difference, you will. If you're suffering, you want to do something negative to other people, then of course it's going to lead to negative results. So this one I would say is like a neutral one. It's been in between, like it can be good, but it can also be bad depending on what your end goal may be. The eighth point we have here is auto-suggestion. So auto-suggestion is like when somebody reads something to themselves that's really positive day in, day out, or tells themselves consciously something that's going to improve their life. 
So that a lot of people in the self-help community discuss affirmations as a form of being positive. So if you're somebody that's really affirming, using your affirmations and taking action, that's going to put you in a really positive mental space. Um, but there can also be a negative thing as well. Like if you get somebody that's depressed or maybe they're on antidepressants or seeing a psychiatrist, etc., and they use auto-suggestion, but they just say, I feel bad every day. They talk about how bad they feel and why things are bad and forgetting to be grateful. Then you're going to get somebody who's going to go down to a negative spiral using auto-suggestion. So auto-suggestion is like a hypnotic rhythm. It can go in either direction, either really good and positive way or really bad. Um, the next one here that he discusses is at the ninth, we're almost done, is fear. Fear is never good. It puts you in a state of mind where it does enhance your focus, it's proven, but it makes you enhance your focus on the wrong things, and in turn, you will not perform correctly. The final one that's going to resort back to fear as well um, is narcotics and alcohol. So narcotics are things like heavy drugs, pills that you would take, powders, etc. I'm not going to name them on YouTube. But those are the things that will never lead you to anything positive. Alcohol is also, everybody knows, it's a depressant. So it actually does bring down your mood and not alleviate it in any way. A lot of people use narcotics and alcohol to mask their fear. And that's the thing why those two very much can join. They can almost be one point in my eyes just because people usually are dependent upon narcotics and alcohol when they're trying to mask some sort of fear or get rid of it completely. So that would be the 10 mind stimuli. Um, I just briefly went over them. I can definitely show a lot more examples and options if need be, but let's leave that in the comments if you guys require that, and I'll do another video on it. All right, so please like, subscribe. That'd be it. Thank you.